India, the world's biggest democracy, and one of the top economic powers, has posted a remarkable record of development socially, technologically, economically, and politically since its independence, nearly seven decades ago. But, did you know, that there still exists a place in India, which is so isolated, that it is yet to discover fire? But before we begin, do not forget to subscribe, and share this video with your friends. North Sentinel Island, which is one of the Andaman Islands, belongs to India in the Bay of Bengal. It is home to the Sentinelese, who reject any contact with the outside world, and are among the last people worldwide, to remain virtually untouched by modern civilization. And thus very little is known about them. The Sentinelese, are thought to be the direct descendants from the first humans who emerged from Africa, and have lived on the island for more than 60,000 years. The Sentinelese, are a hunter-gatherer society, subsisting on hunting, fishing, and collecting wild plants. There is no evidence of agriculture or fire-making. The Sentinelese language is an unclassified language, and is not related to the language of their nearest neighbors. Their population is estimated at 40 to 500, and faces potential threats of infectious diseases, to which they have no immunity. They reject any contact with other people, and attack anyone who nears the island with spears, bows and arrows. The earliest recorded mention of North Sentinel Island, was in 1771, by British surveyor John Ritchie, who passed the island on an East India Company's survey vessel. In 1867, Jeremiah Humphrey, the officer in charge of the Andamanese, journeyed to North Sentinel Island, on the trail of some convicts who had escaped from the penal colony at Port Blair. The Sentinelese, spotted the boat, and hid into the forest. In 1880, an armed British expedition, managed a successful landing on North Sentinel Island. Led by 20-year-old Maurice Vital Portman, the officer in charge of the Andamanese, the expedition party discovered six sentinelies, an elderly couple and four children. They captured the natives, and transported them to Port Blair. The six sentinelies fell ill, and the old man and his wife died, so the four children were sent back to their home with presents. In 1967, a few decades after gaining independence from the British, the Indian government summoned Indian anthropologist Trilonath Pandit, and offered the opportunity to become the first anthropologist to land on the island. On these expeditions, the Sentinelese retreated into the jungle, and there was no contact. But, on January 4, 1991, after 20 years of unsuccessful attempts, an Indian contact expedition, established the first peaceful contact with the Sentinelese. In September 1991, the Indian government added a 5 kilometers or 3 miles exclusion zone around North Sentinel Island. This was done to discourage fishermen, poachers, and tourists from visiting the island. Apart from these, in all other encounters, such as when cargo ship MV Primrose got grounded on the reef surrounding North Sentinel Island, the Sentinelese attacked anyone who went too close to the island. While in most of these hostile encounters, no one got seriously hurt, but not all were lucky enough, as some of the encounters proved to be fatal. Like in 1896, when three escaped Indian convicts fled Port Blair on a makeshift raft, and drifted to North Sentinel Island, two of the fugitives drowned on the reefs surrounding the island, while the lone survivor was killed by the Sentinelese, as soon as he made it to the beach. Or in 2006, when two men illegally fishing for mud crabs off North Sentinel Island, were killed by the Sentinelese when they accidentally landed on the island. In 2004, three days after the notorious Indian Ocean earthquake, an Indian Coast Guard helicopter flew over North Sentinel Island, to search for signs of survival. It was greeted by a lone Sentinelese tribesman, who took aim at the helicopter with his bow and arrow. Evidently, the Sentinelese had survived the earthquake and its after-effects, including the tsunami and the lifting of their island. Although the tsunami disturbed their fishing grounds, the Sentinelese appear to have adapted quite well. The Indian government has stated, that they have no intention to interfere with the lifestyle or habitat of the Sentinelese, and are not interested in pursuing any further contact with them, 
or enforcing law on the island. But what do you think? Should the Sentinelese be contacted, and allowed to enjoy the fruits of modern civilization, or be protected from the curse of modern society, tell us in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, do check out our other videos as well. Links to a few, are on your screen. Please subscribe and do not forget to hit the like button. See you in another video. Thanks for watching.